compare yourself to who you were yesterday and not to who someone else is today. And that's a game you can win because you could be a... If you, if you sit and meditate for any length of time about what you're not doing optimally, answers will spring to mind. You know, you could be getting up earlier. Comparing yourself to who you are now, that's a game you can win. Take stock of where you are. You know, what your advantages are and what your disadvantages are. And then you start with a little humility on the path of incremental improvement. And you know, incremental improvement compounds. And so you can get a long ways. Trajectory in some sense is more important than position for human beings. I mean, if you're starving to death, that's not the situation that I'm describing. But you know, if you've got the bare necessities of life, you're not surrounded by absolute privation. What you really want is to see that you're on an uphill path, you know, something that's got the right slope. And, and, and you can start anywhere on that path. And you, you can improve half a percent a day or a quarter of a percent a day. And you think, well, that's not very much. It's like, it's 100% in four years. And that doesn't count compounding, you know, which means it's yep. actually gonna happen a lot faster. I think that the possibility that you can make yourself slightly better on a continual basis is, I think that's something that's accessible to everyone. I, I think that's equivalent to leading a virtuous life. And, you know, I talked about the terrible catastrophe in some sense of differences in intelligence and differences in conscientiousness and so forth and the, the downside of the meritocracy. But there is something to be said for virtue and truth, you know, and, and that is one thing. Another thing that I've noticed about people who've been phenomenally successful is that they really do they really do everything they can to live a truthful life. And that, you can get a bloody long ways by being honest. The first thing I think you need to understand is that these people that you're comparing yourself to, you don't really know very well. What that means is that you see their shiny outside, but you don't see the reality of their life. People have hard lives, and, and even people who are comparatively fortunate have hard lives. The ideal that you're observing that makes you jealous and resentful is in large part an illusion that's created by your own mind. You're, you're quite different from other people and you shouldn't be comparing yourself to them because they're not like you, you know? They, they don't have your family. They don't have your temperament. They don't have your troubles. They don't have your abilities. The only, the only person that has those is you compare yourself to who you were yesterday and not to who someone else is today. And see, that's a game you can win. Most creative people fail at producing their creative product and monetizing it, right? So your default position, if you're a creative person, is you're gonna fail. And so, and that's because it's hard to come up with something new and it's, and it's hard to present it to the market at the right time, and it's hard to market it. Like, those things are really, really difficult. And so what successful entrepreneurs do is they just keep doing it over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And eventually, if they're fortunate, one of their ideas happens to hit the right place at the right time. And so that's also Dar Darwinian in mm. some sense. You know, you're creating all these little enterprises that are sort of alive. They're, they're run by people, after all. And, even if your idea is good, that doesn't mean it will be successful. There's so many things that have to be taken into account. So this is partly why persistence and that's part of conscientiousness is so useful. It's like, you know, what do they say? If, if at first you fail, then try, try again. And, um, and that would probably mean try something different rather than the same thing. But persistence is helpful because it enables you to run many, many experiments. And, and you need to know that the baseline is failure. You know, it's important because otherwise you'll blame that on yourself, you know, and, and some of that's useful because there's probably some things that you could improve about yourself, but it's very difficult to go from zero to one, you know, it's very, if you're starting out as a salesperson, for example, the hardest sale is the first customer and then, you know, they get easier with each additional customer. 
Be careful who you share good news with because you want to share good news with people who are going to be genuinely happy for you. And that's one way that you can identify those people who are wow. on your side. Be careful who you share bad news with because that's equally tricky. You know, you, you, you want someone who will listen to you when you're having trouble and allow you your grief, uh, especially if it's a consequence of something tragic and who won't try to one-up you, you know, because often when you're talking to people, they'll be thinking about what they have to say that's worse and that's not helpful if you need a listening ear. Um, make one room in your house as beautiful as possible. I, I talked a lot about already about the necessity of cleaning your room, which is, you know, a, in some sense a foolish piece of advice because it seems so obvious, but it's not obvious at all. And you'll find if you try it, especially if you're in a household that's not very functional, that you'll encounter obstacles that you couldn't imagine existed while you're trying to put your life in order. And you can take your surroundings beyond order and, and, and move towards beauty, and that's unbelievably useful. There's a saying that says, tough times produce strong men, strong men produce good times, good times produce weak men, weak men produce tough times. Yes. If that's the truth, which phase are we in today? Well, if you think about it historically, you have to say that we're in good times. I mean, that doesn't mean everything about the current times are good. And, of course, life is always tenuous and, and, and difficult, but it's 1919. If you go back 100 years ago, imagine what the last five years would have been like, right? You would have been, the entire world was encapsulated in a terrible war. The trench warfare was absolutely brutal, and that was a five-year period. And then that was followed by the Spanish influenza, which killed 120 million people. And, you know, so I'd rather be here now than there then by a substantial margin. And um, I think life is never easy, uh, even under relatively positive conditions. But um, I would say that speaking on a global level, there's never been a better time for the majority of people to be alive. And the future, although we're vulnerable and terrible things can always happen to us, it's hard to make a case that the future doesn't look comparatively positive. We're becoming extremely technologically um, sophisticated and the world is changing at an incredibly rapid rate and the only way we're going to be able to manage that in a positive way is if each of us or as many of us as possible are capable of making wise and careful and truthful decisions. And if we do that, then, you know, maybe things can continue to improve. The rate of absolute poverty in the world has fell by 50% between the year 2000 and the year 2012. You know, that's the fastest rate of economic improvement in the history of the world. And, and um, there's plenty of reason to be optimistic um, if you're inclined in that direction. Uh, I would say it's best to marry that with a healthy dose of attentive caution because, well, as I said, things can go badly wrong, but um, I can't think of a time in the past that I would trade for now, despite all the problems that are also part and parcel of being alive now.